Hi everybody, welcome to Fossil Hunting and Collecting with Chris. This is part three of our search for the lost golden trilobite beds. The Beecher trilobite beds that had been lost for about a hundred years and had recently been rediscovered and we are really fortunate to be able to dig into the site where these things are. But in this particular episode, we're going to have a couple of very unexpected finds. Not what we were expecting at all. And in the very beginning, it starts out with a Cambrian surprise. And these are not fossils that are normally found in the Ordovician Beecher's Trilobites bed. What happened is the person who is developing the site, a gentleman named Marcus, has also preps and uh, is a high quality fossil dealer. Basically deals in very upper end fossils. Well, it turns out he decided to prep some of his fossils that he was getting ready for one of his shows. And as he's prepping them, he tossed away a lot of the lesser quality stuff, which was Cambrian material from Utah. Well, Cambrian material from Utah is very scarce up here in the Northeast. So we actually took a look down the side of the hill where he threw his scraps and found some really nice Cambrian trilobites, at least really nice by our standards, not uh, maybe not show standards, but we were very happy to find them. And so we're gonna see this in the very beginning of the film. Then later in this film, we make another really amazing find, not expected for the BTB, Beecher Trilobite Bed. I hope you'll stick around to see that. My friends, like as usual, I'm gonna ask you if you like these films, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Also give us a thumbs up. These will make fossil hunting films pop up more frequently in the YouTube film. Thank you so much, enjoy. Over in this corner, we have a little bit of a windfall. Somebody was prepping fossils and threw their scraps down. And their scraps, I guess, weathered out a bit more and are revealing more fossils. Looks like these are not from this site. This, is like, this looks like material you find out in Utah. And we are finding Elrathia, Cambrian trilobites that have been discarded over the side of the hill here. Apparently these are the pieces that were not worth keeping. I wonder what they were finding. Of course, I don't see many Utah fossils, so I'm gonna pick up all the ones that I find. There's a beautiful dendritic pattern, just a water pattern in that rock. All right, so look at this. They even come with stands. <laughs> this was just pulled out of this dump pile right here. A fossil stand. So if you find a fossil stand buried, there is a good chance that you are going to find fossils. <laughs> yeah, 
you never know. Sometimes you go one rock further. I had to go one rock further into the bushes over here and found this. Gus, what was this species again? Um, I think that's uh, Asaphyxis. Hmm? Don't quote me on that. I already did. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, here we go. <laughs> All right, right there. I don't know if you could see it. It's a triarthrus head. Oh yes, this thing does do close-ups really well. Yes, let me see if I can dry it off. Uh, it kind of has a yellow tint to it, so it may have uh, a little bit of pyrite. Pyrite, yeah. It looks like a body segment over here, so it's probably not complete. Uh, but that body segment's too big for that head, so. All right, I'll put that aside. Let me see if I can find. So here's the, uh, I just did this split right here and right here you can see the small feature. It's a little brachiopod. These are relatively common at this site. There's also a graptolite over there. Oh yes. You can see the counterpart there. Oh. Uh, Thank you for showing us that. starting all right so we're lifting this up now for the first time in what is it 430 million years something on that scale pull this one section out have a lot of pyrite have little pyrite specks not sure if that's super no. No, that's okay. Well, we can break this up later. It's nice when you can just lift the pieces off the ground. Pieces. We're gonna get we're gonna get lost in how much stuff we have. <laughs> yes. Oh, so I was going to try and get this one yeah, up on camera. Sure. I have some smaller crowbars too. Yeah, I've got a little one right down the hill too, but I think this will just, we can just wiggle this up. All right, so nice big piece about ready to be seen for the first time. There should be sponges in this layer. Coming up in two, so I'll do one at a time. Let's get some kind of something going on over here. I wonder if there's anything inside that nodule. Nothing obvious. Those dots, those aren't the sponges, are they? No. Uh, all right. 
Looks like another piece that has to be broken up. Yeah, I'd split that piece up. Okay, we might as well stop too because Alright, so this also is going to split easy right here, and we have something. What it is is hard to tell, it's kind of the shape of a cephalopod, but as Gus pointed out, we actually have pyrite inside. This could be a trilobite or something pyritized that needs to be very carefully worked out. So this is one that's going to get put aside for later. We don't do field cropping when we find something, otherwise we end up with rubble. But the thing in this rock, and it needs to be examined later. Right. Oh, there's a cephalopod. Very nice. Right here. Oh yeah, both halves. Now this one's gonna break. Yeah. Well, luckily that wasn't a museum piece there. Here we go. A little crazy glue will fix that up. Okay. And then there's a big pyritized fossil here. I can't tell what it is though. Let's see where the rest of that was. Let's see that was there. Somewhere over here. We are cleaning all the overburden now because we think we're at the sponge layer. So that big piece is coming up. Here, you're gonna split this. Yep, definitely needs to be split. And here it all goes. All right, awesome job. So I do see some pyrite. Yeah. Here. Yeah. sponges on this surface but you know you need to split all this up yeah this, this should be plenty of layers to come apart yeah and we already flipped it over so uh, we've already just flipped this one over and Gus has found a nice cephalopod can actually see both halves. Very nice. Well, it is becoming fall. It's the first day of October. The trees we are, are starting to turn. And we're off for another day for our pyritized trial bites spot. We got started right away. Finally got down to a decent layer. and made a couple of interesting finds, which I will bring you in for. I guess. Pretty good. I'm making big rocks into small rocks again. <laughs> Found a few fossils. Um, a lot of cephalopods today. Um, not any good uh, prioritized trilobites yet, but we're in the wrong layers for that. So that's going to be about here. Okay. So um, I think today's just sort of uh, mainly, housekeeping. Yes, mainly overburden. Well, mainly overburden work, but you know, there's still some yeah. nice fossils here and there in the overburden. Yeah. I found out uh, just while you're up over on the side, I found a uh, prioritized. Cephalopod. Oh, nice. I like it. Where is it? 
Here is one half. Yep. Partly prioritized anyway. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's two cephalopods there. Yes. Three. Three. So you got one, two, and then three. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. So those. And the other half of it is, uh, is right up here. I would have brought it down. Sorry. No, no, it's fine. Yeah. There's a fourth one in this piece that isn't in that piece. This big one? Mm hmm. I saw three. I didn't use there's a fourth one too, huh? Yeah. See this big one here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So there's the three, one, two, three that you have there, but then it looks like this piece came off here with a big yeah, one. Yeah, so on that, that probably came when I pulled it out. It came yeah. off. Because this was on the bottom. When I first came to this quarry, there was an exposed pair of cephalopods. One was this big, and the other was about that big, completely pyrotized on the floor of the quarry. And had I known how fast this shale disintegrates, I would have cut them out because a week later they were gone. You know? <laughs> like they were still there, but they were gravel. They were, you, know, you could tell the pieces were still there, but it was, you couldn't save it. Probably pretty close to that flare with uh, lots of bits and pieces. Uh, probably right around here. Uh, could be, yeah. Okay. What did you guys name that layer? Well, that's that's the isn't that the 490 that we're talking about. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Getting down there. Okay, so our our numbering is a joke because there was a. 822 layer and a 906, which turned out were not numbered layers. They were the dates they were found. But as a joke, we started calling one above it a 490. All right, so Gus has just found a file of Karen. Good thing, a variety of prehistoric shrimp. A very good thing to find in here. Now I made a decent find. Can you see it? Nice big cephalopod. Here's the cephalopod. Comparing it to our rock hammer. Pretty big cephalopod. Trying not to get in the sunlight over here, but if you can see right over by where my finger is pointing, that is the half of the cephalopod that's going into the bottom, into the rocks below it. I'm gonna try to get that out. We'll have to see if it comes out intact or not. It's uh, difficult to, to get large pieces of this rock out. We'll have to see what happens, but it's pretty nice. It's about an eight or nine inch long cephalopod. Without fail, pretty much every one of these trips now I go on, I end up turning over a rock with a snake under it. So I made two finds off camera of this nice large cephalopod and I have this really intriguing thing over here it's very large 
looks like it could be a thora thoracic segment for maybe a eurypterid or something like that. So that's a very interesting find over here. So way up here on the outcrop, Gus has found a cryptolithus, which is also a nice Silurian trilobite, but we don't normally find them around here. Um, just a piece of it. A piece of it, okay. So, piece of it shows that he was here though, so that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. Oh, well, they find them here. Uh, they're just not common. So right there, there's a little piece where you can see the little fenestra from the cephalon, the little holes in the head. Okay, I'm zoomed in. Can you see it right there? Yes. There's a piece of a, there's a tri tri tiny triarthrus cephalon right there too. Very nice. And there's a piece of some other cephalon here. I can't tell what that was, but all oh. sorts of, there's like bryzoans. Yeah, that is a very busy piece. Yeah, there's bryzoans, there's orbiculata, there's uh, some brachiopods, and pieces of trilobites all tumble together. So it's unlikely in a layer like that, it's unlikely that you're gonna find a complete trilobite because that was a high speed flow and everything got tumbled together. So the trilobites got broken up. Uh, that's why you only find pieces of it in, in that layer. From this angle with the clouds behind you, you look like the god of the trilobites. <laughs> so it turns out that this piece that I turned over, it actually is a eurypterid. And not only is it a, uh, a eurypterid, but it, they are actually very scarce. This one is going to be going to the Museum of Natural History. So this could end up being the second fossil that uh, with my name on it over at the Museum of Natural History. So it's, uh, I don't know if they'll display it or not, but that's where it's going. So you may wonder, why are we so excited about the thorax section of a Eurypterid? Well, keep in mind the beach's trilobite bed, this is Ordovician material. So while if we see a Eurypterid segment like that up at the Ridgemont Quarry, for example, that would be okay, kind of, average but there are few to no large eurypterids known from the ordovician in new york state and in fact i'm going to be told that this thorax section indicates the largest ordovician eurypterid ever found in new york state and this is why i've been asked by marcus to give this one to the american museum of natural history don't mind doing that. It's probably be more used to the uh, people who are studying it. Plus, I'm very proud to already have one fossil on display at the American Museum of Natural History. You can see that in my best finds of the year video. So this was our latest adventure. Made some really good finds. The unexpected Cambrian trial bites in the beginning. We dug deeper into the features. Found a few fossils here and there. We're not really down to the gold yet. That's yet to come, but we're getting much closer. We're probably only a few layers away now from the Beecher's Golden Trilobites. So that's going to be coming up in the search for the lost gold trilobites. Thank you very much and happy fossil hunting adventures to everyone. Have a great day.